Life's too short to drive boring cars. Did you seriously buy one of the ugliest cars on the market today? Well, let's get into it now. Like they say, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and quite honestly, I think for the most part that's quite true. We can always find the pretty in something ugly, and we can always find something ugly about those that are normally considered pretty. However, we're talking about cars. I'm gonna share a list of vehicles. From my perspective, I'm gonna give a walk down to some vehicles that I personally find are atrociously ugly and wonder how in the heck the manufacturers ever came to that. Well, let's take a quick look. So the first one on my list is literally one that you've probably all thought you know what, it's so ugly, its mother wouldn't feed it with a slingshot. That's typically the response that you get when most people are talking about this car. Right there, we're talking about the Nissan Juke. What on God's green earth were they thinking? I mean, look at these headlights, how they stick above the rest. I don't know what they were thinking. It almost looks like a couple of water blisters, doesn't it? I would say it looks like a water blister. And then they've got these ugly lights there that don't really look like they belong. They're actually sort of in the middle. They're not fog lights, because there's some fog lights down there, but there's something in the middle. I'm not sure what those are, but they are ugly. Now the grill is typical Nissan, nothing outlandish there but if you look at the roof line it's very bulbous and roundy looking and it chops off at the back it's like they tried to create something sporty but they grossly missed the boat there then we circle around the back and I don't know what this is it almost a combination of vomit and diarrhea all mixed up into one and honestly it's probably a Volvo looking tail light if anything but again they tried to create a sleek look to it and then you've got the CVT transmission which just adds and makes these even worse than they could have been already so not only does it not look great and we all know that Nissan struggle with some reliability problems in recent years particularly with the transmission but also look at this I, they tried to do something clever here not sure it totally worked for me but even the quality doesn't look like it's up to lasting very very long not a very good looking vehicle certainly not the most reliable and if you're going to be relegated to driving something hideous like that possibly maybe look at something a little bit more reliable from honda or toyota if you want to go with that short stubby look but i know they tried to do something different but not sure they made the grade on that one and the next one has to do with what we have right here. And we're talking about Lexus and we're talking about the NX and all the SUVs are a little bit nasty. Now, if it weren't for the outright reliability that Lexus runs, you'd really have to question whether you even want to drive these vehicles. Yes, Lexus is unbeatable. We know that Lexus is unbeatable for reliability and they make some outstanding cars for sure. But the SUVs have a particular grill that isn't all that great in my opinion. It's just way too out there. First of all, the NX right here, look right there. This is actually a grossly overstyled overbite right there. It almost looks like it has no bottom jaw. Have you ever seen somebody that actually has no bottom jaw or such an overbite? Well, that's what we're looking at here. I don't really care for that look. And even here, they try to do what they're doing on the rest of the model lineup, but then it just shaves it down and you feel like it's just missed the mark in terms of styling. And that doesn't change whether you go a little bit newer you know, the, the common theme is still the same, but just looking down the line, you'll see the NX models are all like this. They have this overbite in whether it's a few years old or recently new late model, they're all the same until you get to the brand new right here. This here is the latest and greatest. It's a 21 model year of the NX. Now it's a restyle. They've reworked the whole car. This car is a little more attractive for sure than the outgoing models. As you can see, we've got a much bigger underbite now. We actually look like we have a jawline there for sure. Much more attractive, but still that grill styling leaves a bunch to be desired and honestly not sure that that is a good look for me. Even if they sort of broke that up somehow, it would look a lot more impressive, but that's not a great look. But then even with the RX model, it's the same story. They have that strong underbite. However, it's that big open bar section here, just not really great looking and quite frankly, ruins the overall look. I feel like it needs a little rework on there. Same story over here. You'll see another 21 model year of the NX. It's just not the greatest thing since sliced bread. And another late model vehicle that I find horrendously ugly is actually this vehicle right here. We're talking about the Escapade. Oh, wait a minute, Escalade. That's by Cadillac, a GM product. And I have always thought they've overdone them. I mean, right here we have, we'll call this one a GMC Denali. That's the blinged out top end version. But if we go with the base, like a Yukon, those are always more appealing to me. These have always been grossly overdone. And do you remember the movie Family Vacation or Vacation, Big Ugly Green Station Wagon that has all those headlights and all those lights on the front grill? Well, that's exactly what this looks like. I mean, I look at this and I can't help but think with all those lights and 
bling and shine coming at you. That car is just way too over the top in terms of styling, way too many lights. Personally, I love this Cadillac style better. We have the XT6. We have a smaller, lower profile arrangement of lights. I think this is a much cleaner arrangement than you're finding on these Cadillac Escapades or Escalade bling machines right here. Not only that, it's your typical GMC as we all know that there's been lots of issues and controversy with engine lifter rocker problems. We've definitely got some transmission issues that are pretty prominent with a lot of these vehicles. I mean, they're big, sure, they haul a lot of people, they can tow a lot of weight, but they've also don't come without some issues. Very unique, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you got these big tail lights here too. Everything with these vehicles is exaggerated. Everything's large and in charge, and quite frankly, I just think it's way grossly overdone. I mean, for the most part, it's just a pickup truck on the side. If you look along here, it's a pickup. But again, as I say, too much headlights. And the other thing that I find, I don't know where you guys are from, but where I'm from, it seems like nine times out of 10, I'm driving down the road, I've got one of these vehicles bearing down on my ass. I always seem to see these types of drivers getting way more aggressive, pushing their way in, tailgating, trying to push you out of their way, getting in the left-hand lane, trying to shove you out of the way. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's an Escalade thing, not sure, but anyway. That's one that I think just because that front end styling is way over the top, I think is truly one of the ugliest vehicles on the road today. And there's yet another one. And what is that? Well, it's actually a reliable vehicle. That's not the problem. But we're talking about ugly or fugly, if you will. And we're talking about right here. And we have the Civic Type R. Now, not all Civics are ugly. A lot of them are pretty mainstream. And if, if anything, a lot of them are just plain vanilla yogurt by style of design. But I think they've sort of gone overboard. They, they crossed that line of a styling exercise and gone way overboard. Here, let's take a look and I'll explain why I think these are horrifying to look at. I mean, they are reliable, yes. They make 300 horse. Torque steer, yes. Manual gearbox. And truly one of the fastest cars out there on a racetrack. They really are dialed in. So it's not about that, but it is about the looks. So there's certain angles of this vehicle that look pretty interesting and quite frankly, uh, some of it you can do with. I mean, there's nothing wrong with putting a little hood scoop on there. I mean, Subaru's been doing that for years. I mean, clearly this front grille, the upper grille here is nice. It's nice and tidy. You've got some nice black accent there. But then they get a little bit overboard here on the front. We have some carbon fiber, which is a little bit excessive for a Civic, if you ask me. But again, for those that love that brand, that's fine. But that's not the end of it. We have Brembo brakes, which is kind of interesting as well to show that it's sporting intention. But you'll notice they do away with some of the things that are nice to have. Of course, I know the car is intended more to be a track monster, so you don't have sunroofs here. But you have these vents here on the back side of the fenders where they flare out. Definitely a little bit much for a Honda Civic anyway. And this is where it really gets kind of ugly in my opinion. You put all these little odds and sods, look like they glued a bunch of plastic pieces on there from your kid's Meccano set. Then they put this wing that is way over the top. I mean, what are we talking about here? This is a Civic not fire breathing mclaren but look at this wing on here this is just too much in my opinion i also believe they went overboard here on the vtec turbo with this extra wing so now not only is one wing not enough they go and put a second wing on there and just when that's not enough you think they put another aggressive lower diffuser in carbon fiber just to add the elements oh more bling more bling on this type r of course and it's a honda and you know it's red so it typically means it's on fire now great you put little flares here and they cut them off at the door it really looks like a body kit is what this car looks like you'd never know this car was factory because a lot of the parts like the rockers and the rear diffusers they look like they're just bolted on so does the wing it looks like an aftermarket i mean if you took this wing off then you've probably got enough going on here. You've had this nice transition from lights across, then it feels like it makes sense. But they have to go and put that oversized wing on there and again, all this extra pieces and bits. And then even this, not sure what this is trying to do, but it, apparently it looks like it's trying to move some air. I guess that's hard to say what that was intended for, but overall, not a great looking car. Quite honestly, yes, they're reliable. Yes, they're good to own from a Honda perspective, but honestly, just one of the nastiest looking cars on the road and make you think, what were they thinking? Well, I've got another one for you, and I think a lot of you would agree, and some of you maybe not. And again, it's beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and it's this little unit right here. Right there, we're talking about a smart car. I mean, these you'll find all over the map. Smart, which was more or less a derivative of Mercedes-Benz, and Mercedes carried the brand for several years now. And initially, it came out with a diesel engine, which put out minimal power, 
but it also did come out with about 90 miles per gallon. So in other words, you could drive this thing forever. You could drive it almost to the moon and back on a half a tank of fuel and not even feel guilty about it. But look at this thing. That means you have to drive these cars. I mean, sure, there's some cool styling pieces on there. You've got the great little sideways Ferrari taillights. Look at this funky little vent cheap little handles and of course everything is made all these panels are made to replace they're all plastic and they're made should you have a little fender bender you can rebuild this car like a Meccano set of course it's a very very small car as you can see from the front it's very narrow it's actually only about two-thirds the width of a normal vehicle but the headlights pretty basic looking mirrors pretty average nothing on top after all it is a no frills type of car You've got a little hatchback, but really no room to haul much of anything in this thing. Really, it is all about being frugal. Reliable, yeah, marginal. But in all honesty, these things are so funky looking that you almost are embarrassed to be seen driving these things. Now, yes, I know we're in a place now where fuel costs are rising and everyone's looking for frugal ways to move themselves down the road or cheap transportation, but I just can't get past this not a great looking vehicle although with that said they were funky the first time i seen them in europe before they even touched down in north america i was kind of impressed because in europe everything is small so it looked like it fit in but here in north america look what you've got going on here here's a big titan xd and there we have that little mini what do you think's going to happen if that big tank runs into this little guy not much at least in the way of survival so the smart car in my opinion one of the ugliest vehicles on the road today and with all of that said, be sure to click right there. You're going to love the 10 things you do not want to tell the used car salesman. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.